In my hand, I have the Samsung Gear S3 Classic smartwatch. In this video, I'm going to find out whether or not the S3 Classic can replace some of the go-to golf gear in my golf bag. Today, we're talking about golf tech. Hey guys, this is Bear and this is Degenerate Golf, my journey to improved golf. If you like this video, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button down below. Comment if you feel the need to comment. Share this with your friends. I've got some more content planned coming up that you don't want to miss. Today's video is going to be a review of sorts. In my hand, I've got the Samsung Gear S3 Classic. Now just so you know, this is something I paid for. This is not a promoted review. This is not going to be a normal review or unboxing. I'm pretty confident in the functionality of this watch for my day-to-day -day use. What I want to find out is, can the S3 provide me golf functionality that will help me to consolidate some of the gadgets I carry in my bag? So first things first, let's unbox the watch. Okay, so Samsung has two Gear S3s. They have the Gear S3 Frontier and the Gear S3 Classic. I purchased the Gear S3 Classic because I need to wear it in uh, more of a business setting with suits and such. And I felt like uh, the switching of the bands with this particular watch face uh, would lend itself more towards uh, versatility of, of outfits and things I need to wear and settings I need to wear it in. The Frontier is much more rugged on the outside, looks a lot more like a, uh, a sports watch. So I uh, purchased the Gear S3 Classic. Again, we don't want to do a normal unboxing here. We don't really care about the packaging or the tape. But a couple of the uh, features that I'm really interested in for both day-to-day -day functionality, but I think would lend itself towards uh, really good golfing functionality for on the course. Uh, the Gear S3 has a built-in speaker and standalone GPS, uh, which obviously is functional for the golf course. Uh, I have a need for being able to text and answer phones while on the course, especially when I'm playing by myself. Obviously, etiquette prevails here, but instead of pulling out your uh, your phone when you have your glove on, when your hands are wet, uh, when I've got my uh, password or my biometric on, then I can't get my, my fingerprint to work. Uh, having the built-in speaker so that I can answer phones, uh, the display so I can see who's calling, especially if it's the wife, uh, I can just quickly answer the phone and say I'm on the course without having to pull my, my phone out of the bag. It's got a, a 1.3 inch uh, circular AMOLED, super AMOLED display, uh, which hopefully will, will provide good display quality. Uh, a, a lot of the reason why I didn't go to the Android Wear smartwatches is because I was reading uh, issues with the resolution and with the display quality, so I decided to go with the gear. I also have a uh, a Galaxy Note 5, so the compatibility, even though this is uh, uh, Tizen or Tizen OS and this is an Android OS, the compatibility should be better. It's got the Bluetooth, it's got Wi-Fi, uh, and it's got NFC. Uh, I do use Samsung Pay, uh, so it will be nice to use it on, a, on my watch here, especially again at the course, uh, if I need to use it for a quick run into the clubhouse or use it to uh, pay my green fees. Don't have to pull the phone out of the bag. Don't have to pull my wallet out of the bag, etc. Another thing, another key thing here for, for golf enthusiasts to use this on the course is that it is military rated for uh, dust and water resistance. Remember, and I always you know, sort of remind people that have these, water resistance does not equate to waterproof. Water resistance is just that. It's resistant to water. Uh, but you can check online. There's a lot of videos about the... Uh, uh, the depth and the, the grade to which this will resist water. People have dunked it into uh, aquariums and such. Wireless charging as well, and it's got always on display, but as well on the course, always on display means that it's a quick flick of the wrist and you can, uh, you can see what's on. You don't have to. Currently, I use a Microsoft Band. Uh, especially for golf, and it's gotten to a point where I only use it for golf, but you do have to press a button to get the, uh, the display to, uh, to come on, uh, which can be annoying when you're, when you're in the middle of a round. So always on display would be nice just to check the time. Don't have to pull out your, your phone again to check the time. Uh, again, Android compatibility uh, and military grade certified durability, which is great. Uh, and it's a 22 millimeter watch, which means the interoperability with standard watch bands. Uh, and you'll see in a second when I pull this out why that's imperative for me, especially for golf functionality, is that you'll be able to put a standard watch band, like a sports band or something that would be a little more rugged for golf, 
uh, onto the Gear S3 face and not have to worry about a leather band or a metal band, stainless steel, et cetera, et cetera, ruining that band. And if it does wear out, you can just replace it once again with something new. So those are the features that I'm interested in here on the Gear S3. Let's open it up, see what it looks like. So open it up, a nice little box, good display. Ah, oh, there's the watch. Uh, this is the first time I'm gonna be sort of handling this uh, myself here. Uh, this is the charger standard if you're used to uh, uh, the gear, uh, gear line of smartwatches. This is sort of the standard wireless charging station. Uh, it's magnetic, so you can just put your phone on it. We're not gonna concentrate on that though because all we care about is golf. That's all I care about. So uh, let's take a look at the watch. I mean, my initial reactions are this, is that uh, it's a, it's a medium, medium uh, weight watch. It's not very heavy grade. Uh, I generally wear Michael Kors and Kenneth Cole watches, have some good watches in a nice collection, uh, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's got some heft to it, but it's not a heavy watch. So I would probably opt for a heavier band in order to get this to feel a little more uh, substantial on my wrist. It looks like a premium watch. It doesn't look like a smart watch from there. Uh, it's got premium finishes. A couple of the things of note here, and I'll turn it on, but uh, the leather band is nice. Uh, you know, standard leather band for a watch. Let me see if, oh, here's power. Read the instructions there. So let's power it up and see what happens. Uh, we'll give that a second there to power up. All right, so it's asking me to download the Samsung Gear app, which I have uh, from the Samsung Galaxy Apps Store or the uh, Google Play Store. There we go. I mean, this this bezel is just a, a uh, that's just a nifty little feature. That's that's really cool, really interesting for that. Uh, I will say this: the display is beautiful. It's a, it's a gorgeous display. It looks good so far. There are a couple things already on the way. Uh, again, for golf functionality, I would be using a band like this normally day to day. I've also got a Breitling uh, uh, style Navitimer uh, watch band coming, metal watch band. Uh, that looks more like a Breitling. Uh, I also have a sport watch band coming uh, that looks more like what this silicone Kenneth Cole would look like. Uh, and that it would be what I would use for, uh, for golf and sporting type things. I don't want to sweat through the, the leather band. So a couple things that immediately I have to upgrade uh, that are already coming. I've already got them, but I would be concerned about the watch face if I'm wearing this in a, in a uh, in a, in a scenario or a setting where I'm gonna be using a lot of my hands, a lot of movement, a lot of rubbing. Uh, this brush, I, I immediately understand that this, the, the, uh, the chrome portion of this watch face is gonna get uh, micro scratched and micro dinged. So eventually I'm just gonna have to buff it out to make it all brushed. And then the brushed bezel here will probably get sort of uh, cross scratched and look a little bit weirder. So I'll try to find something to protect that. I've certainly got Gorilla Gloss coming for the watch face. I don't want micro scratches on that. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we protect that, especially when we're golfing. And for golfing, so the, the Gorilla Gloss or the tempered glass for the face, uh, as well as a sport band, we wanna make sure that we update that. So once this updates, uh, we'll come back and we'll take a look at a couple of the things that we'd wanna see, and then we'll go straight towards uh, golf functionality because this is a review about the Gear S3 and golf, uh, not your normal unboxing. Uh, there are plenty of other videos out there for that. So immediately, uh, it's good looking. I mean, it, it looks, uh, I haven't been one for smartwatches. I've been holding off on them for a while. I see a lot of people use our Apple watches on the course uh, and that uh, sort of, I'm envious of that. I uh, wanna see what the experience is like. The watch face itself from a distance looks like a watch. I mean, it looks like a premium quality watch face. You can tell that it is uh, a display even at, even at distance. It does look cartoony. It looks, you know, it looks digital. It looks, it looks graphics intensive. So let's see what we got. I know there's, you know, if you haven't looked at any other unboxing videos, there are interactions you can do with the watch faces potentially uh, that allow you to, for some, for example, some of these watch faces, I'd be able to open weather, et cetera, et cetera. We're not really gonna look at that, but what I want, do wanna look at is, first and foremost, let's see what type of watch faces there are. What would I want for, uh, for golfing? Uh, for me, uh, because I don't necessarily want to do the, the maths in my head, uh, I don't need a chronograph. Let's look for something a little digital. Let, yeah, let's look at that. So that would be interesting for golf, uh, and I know that you can, Using the app, I know that you can uh, uh, customize some of these faces, so I would change that color, uh, the front white. But again, that's got all everything I need. It's got uh, it's got 
three uh, time zones, my time zone, and it's got uh, my steps and the sunset hour. So that'd be great for golf. Uh, what I really am interested in, I mean, this bezel is just, uh, that's just really good function. Uh, yeah, I really like that. Uh, calories, steps, barometer, news briefing, that, that's, that's nice. Uh, music, again, golf course, control your music uh, from your phone without having to take your phone out of your pocket. So again, that's, uh, that, that's an interesting functionality for me in terms of golfing. I do a lot of golfing uh, right after work where I've got like right now an hour, hour and a half of daylight and I just try to go out for two hours uh, and get something done real quick. Uh, so let's get back to the watch face. All right, so we got watch faces here on the Gear S3 app. Uh, let's keep that there. Uh, so watch faces here, it tells me the battery life is 84%. Uh, on the app, uh, it tells me what how much storage is free. Uh, I can set up my Samsung Pay or probably connect it at this point. There's suggested watch faces, which I will go through and I will uh, gather some watch faces. Ah, now here we are, suggested apps, and I see exactly what we're looking for. So Golf Navi, and this is exactly what we want to do, uh, what we're looking for here for this, for this watch. Remember, this isn't uh, an Android watch, so you don't have access to the uh, the plethora of Android apps uh, that are out there in the Google Play Store. But I did look into Golf Navi, and I'm going to install it now just while we're talking. Uh, I did look into Golf Navi, and it seems to be an interesting application by which I can try to potentially uh, consolidate some of the tech I use. So again, like I said, I generally use the Microsoft Band, and that gives me a watch. It gives me a timer. I like to put on a timer uh, so I can check my pace of play. Uh, you know, put on a timer for an hour and five minutes, see if you can get through the first nine, make sure that your pace is correct. Uh, I use it for uh, distance. Uh, uh, I, I also use my Nikon Cool Shot uh, to laser the, the pin, but the, the watch gives me, the Microsoft Band watch is really good at giving me front, back, and middle, so I use that on the go. The problem with Microsoft Band is not GPS on all the time, so I do have to hit a button in order to get the GPS to calibrate and give me the distance every time. Uh, but you know, as, as far as golf functionality, it gives me what I need to do. It also updates stats to the My TaylorMade Pro, uh, which gives you game golf type stats based off of uh, Microsoft, uh, the Microsoft Band data collection. Because the interesting thing about Microsoft, and I'm, it's going to be interesting to see if Golf Navi does this, and I don't think it does. Uh, Microsoft uh, has the sensors in the band. Uh, and this is the band one, I didn't go to the band two, but it has the sensors in the band, which it pretty accurately determines uh, your strokes. It knows when you've hit the ball, it knows when it's a practice swing or you've hit the ball. It pretty accurately does that. So when I'm playing by myself, uh, again, if you're playing in a tournament setting or you want to post a round, always fill out your scorecard. This, this will not uh, uh, substitute for your scorecard. But when I'm playing by myself uh, or when I'm playing in a friendly game, uh, then it's something that I, it's one less thing I have to do. Uh, so that's why I use the Microsoft Band. I was using it as a full activity tracker before, but I just got away from that. I wasn't wearing it every day. So if I have a watch, again, that I'm wearing every day to work, uh, and it's, it's using S Health, again, that's one more functional thing that I've got from one device to consolidate into this device. Uh, so again, golf as well as as day-to-day -day functionality then i use my nikon cool shot obviously to to laser distances uh gives you directly to the pin i don't generally use apps to do so because you want to go directly to the pin but i do use the apps to understand front and back uh, of the green uh, again the watch now i don't have to wear a watch uh, if i'm using this or i don't have to pull my phone out for time uh, and then game golf i want to see what exactly the S3 and Golf Navi can do uh, to replicate some of the functionality I get from the game golf. Uh, if I put in the strokes, can I go in and, and, and tie those shots to a club? Uh, will it give me the distances bet between shots? That type of thing. So I don't exactly know the full functionality of Golf Navi yet. One thing I did see that I thought was interesting, which we'll go out on the course and we'll figure out, is that I don't get from all of these uh, devices that I currently have, is that Golf Navi gives you distances to uh, hazards, uh, 270 to the bunker on the left. And that would help me to decide what club to use as opposed to just winging it. 
I'm not, I have, I've never been one. I also use my phone. It goes without saying, I use my phone with Swing, uh, Swing to Swing app, uh, my scorecard, and whatever else I use, uh, the USGA app for certain things. And I want to see what functionality Golf Navi does so I don't have to pull it out for Swing by Swing. Uh, I generally use that application to do a quick sort of view of how far a hazard is or where I am in, in relation to a hazard. If I can use that straight from my watch, that would be that would be interesting as well. So let's turn on Golf Navi. Let's just take a look at what it looks like because that's really what we're here to do is see if this has got some good functionality for golf. So you're generally used to it. It immediately says start, start around. You're generally used to opening up a, an application on your phone and saying, what club are you at? I'm at Piedmont Club. It knows exactly what the course rating is. It knows exactly what uh, uh, what the, the blue tees length are and ex exactly where you're at based on GPS. I assume if I hit start here, it's going to ask me, yeah, it's searching for golf clubs. Uh, I'm going to be able to put in my home club, which is Piedmont Club or anything that's around me like uh, Stonewall or Bristow. I've got plenty of golf clubs around me. The GPS will be always on. Again, you heard the, uh, the speaker, uh, which is here. Uh, you heard Golf Navi talking to me. That will be interesting again to see how effective and functional that is on the golf course for uh, quickly accepting a phone call. Uh, you know, being able to tell my wife that I'm golfing, uh, I'm on the green, and that I'm not going to be picking up the phone. And then it shows what's near me. I'm going to select Piedmont because we'll uh, we'll go out today, and I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I got three particular holes that I'm thinking about to check what Golf Navi does in terms of showing me the hazards and how to score those holes. So if I pick Piedmont, what exactly happens at this point? Uh, when you enter the teeing ground, start the guide. So let's see what it does. Score, green, settings. Uh, it's going to show us what the green is doing. Uh, I think elevations, etc. cetera. Uh, so you're going to have to look at this in terms of uh, you're not going to be able to, this, this obviously you can't use during a postable round, you can't use during a tournament. Uh, I think it provides you more than just laser distances. It's going to provide you plays as based on slope and wind, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it'll be a really interesting functional way uh, to golf. And I'm really excited to, to sort of get out on the, on the course and take a look at this. So the next thing we need to do is go out on the course and see how it works. So let's do that. All right, so that's the quick unboxing of the Samsung Gear S3 Classic. Uh, I've got a temper glass coming in. I've got a new band coming in, so that'll help me uh, use it in more of a sport function. I think what we got to do now, we took a, lo a look at Golf Navi to start. I'm going to play with the, the, uh, the watch a little bit more, put some faces on that I like, get it set up. I've got to go through Golf Navi and know exactly what I'm doing with it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out on the course uh, with the Microsoft Band, with my phone, uh, use it against a couple of apps, see where we're at. I want to judge the distances. Uh, I don't expect it to be anything sort of uh, unnerving considering there's a bunch of applications out there that understand how to use the GPS, have a bunch of uh, golf clubs in their, in their inventory. So I want to take it out and I want to see how functional the watch is. I want to put some phone calls through it and I want to use it in a playing scenario so I can see if I can judge the hazards, etc. help me pick my clubs. So let's, the next thing to do is to, to, to take the watch out on the course and see how it plays. All right, it's uh, cold, it's wet. We're uh, got about an hour, maybe a little bit less of light left. It's about 39 degrees, so uh, I'm gonna sneak out here on the course, play a couple holes, see if we can't get an idea for how well the Gear S3 Classic works in a uh, golf situation. <clears throat> so I got a couple holes that I want to play. It's 39 degrees, no warm-up time, so this should be interesting. Uh, but we want to check the uh, S3 functionality in itself. It's wet. So that water resistance will really come in handy. But then uh, I also want to check the Golf Navi app and see if it's uh, something that's worth worth the time. So let's see off and see exactly what we got going on. So this is one of those challenging holes the Golf Navi can help you on. There are bunkers up the left, which should be around 220. There is Bunkers up the left, which should be around 220. There's water, a bunker to the right, which shouldn't be in contention, but then water. So we'll see what Golf Navi says. I'm not seeing a place where I can get the uh, hazard readout. That's a disappointment. I thought we had hazard readouts on this. So, obviously.
faded right through the middle. So, miraculously, I found that. So I had no idea where it was going. Okay, so I was able to get a few holes in before I ran out of light. It's uh, cold, it's rainy here in Virginia. The light goes away at around 4.45. Uh, I was able to get out there for about half hour, 45 minutes. So what's the verdict? Uh, does the Samsung Gear S3 Classic provide the functionality needed for today's golfer? Yes and no. First, let's talk about the watch itself. What do I like? Number one, it is a beautiful watch. It's a premium looking watch. It has great design features like the, the bezel. Uh, if you're not familiar, the rotating bezel is used instead of, or in lieu of, uh, swiping on the screen. So you have two choices. On the course, when your hands are cold, when your hands are covered in gloves, uh, sometimes that can be a lot easier just to utilize the bezel as opposed to taking off a glove or drying your hands to use the touch screen device. Number two, it's compatible with my current Android phone. Uh, I use a Samsung Galaxy Note 5, uh, and it's even though it is not an Android Wear phone, it seems to have a good embedded uh, interoperability with the Android system. Uh, so Samsung has done a good job to meld those two operating systems so that they have the compatibility that you need without jumping to Android Wear, which I find limited in some of the, in some of the functionality. Number three, uh, most importantly to me, as a smartwatch, it's functional. It's versatile, it's customizable. I can wear this watch both with a business suit and out golfing. Uh, I think in order to do so, you, I'll have to have a selection of straps to use, watch straps, leather straps. Uh, when I'm golfing, probably a silicone strap with a deployment uh, buckle on it. Uh, that way it, it, I can just feel comfortable that it's not gonna fall off. I didn't feel like it was gonna fall off today, uh, but I, I wanna feel comfortable that it is water resistant. I don't wanna ruin the leather straps and I don't want to ruin any stainless steel or metal straps that I, that I may use. So I have a silicone strap on the way with a deployment buckle. That would be the configuration of choice if I was gonna use this as a golf as a golf gadget. So as far as the smartwatch goes, uh, what don't I like about the Samsung Gear S3? First of all, the weight of the watch. I would expect a little bit more heft, a little bit more substance. It seems a little light to me, uh, which is a consideration for me. Maybe it's just psychological, but if you're spending $300 to $400 on a watch or something that I'm using for sport activity, I don't wanna forget that it's there. I wanna feel a little bit of a more substantial product on my wrist. Along the same lines, the bezel. The bezel seems a little loose to me, and that may be just my personal preference. This may just be uh, engineering function over form. They may not want it to be tight, but for me, it seems to rotate a little too quick, a little too loose for my taste. Uh, but again, that's, a, that's just personal preference. All in all, as a smartwatch, uh, I'm very excited about it. I like it so far so good. I've only had it on for a few hours, uh, but it is something that I'm, uh, that I'm excited to have. I, I certainly would recommend it to other people as a day-to-day -day smartwatch. But the purpose of these videos is, would it be a good golf gadget? For me, the answer is both yes and no, depending on how you want to use it. I can see where this smartwatch would be able to uh, supplement my, my laser finder, 
Uh, if I didn't have my Nikon Cool Shot or if you didn't have your Bushnell with you, it certainly does an adequate job uh, with the Golf Navi app in terms of distancing uh, to the pin. There, the courses I played today, my home course that was in the system, it did have reasonably accurate uh, distances to the front, middle, and back of the pin. Uh, so it, it can provide that function. As well, even being on the course, I accepted a phone call. Uh, I was able to decline a couple phone calls, but I also took a phone call today. It was, it was windy today, it was rainy, it was tough to hear the audio from coming from the speaker, but I didn't have to go to my phone at all. I didn't have to pull my phone out of my pocket. I didn't have to waste any battery on my phone. Uh, I was able to accept the phone call, uh, a real quick one actually, to be more accurate, I was able to decline phone calls with the proper message and I was able to listen to a voicemail. Uh, so that did provide great functionality for me and that is something that my current watch, my current activity watch, my Microsoft Band 1, that doesn't do uh, and I, I would rather have that functionality as opposed to pulling my phone out during play. Along the same regards, I was able to, to keep track of my text messages and get notifications on emails. Uh, so I was able to be on the course, uh, but check in on whether my wife was texting me or whether I got important emails that I needed to look on. And again, didn't have to pull out my phone, which is always good because we run out of batteries uh, on the course or you know, the reason why I'm on the course is to be disconnected and I don't necessarily want to be checking my phone all the time. So I can see where it would uh, substitute potentially in some regards for my rangefinder as well as for the current activity watch that I wear, the Microsoft Band. Uh, so that's a plus. Now let's talk about the app that I was using, Golf Navi. What do I like about that? First of all, the app itself was easy. It was simple. Uh, it had good color schemes, good contrasting. It didn't have layers and layers and layers of screens uh, that you had to forward or back out of. So it was a very functional, very simple to use application from the start. It provided numbers and it provided distances in very big visuals, uh, very big graphics. So you didn't have to squint. You didn't have to really make an effort uh, to see the watch. Sometimes with the Microsoft Band, the numbers could be too small and you really have to get in there and look at what you're doing. With this watch, really, it was just a flip of the sleeve and I, I got the distances that I needed to see. Secondly, the app itself is contained within the watch. I didn't need to have a secondary application open on my phone, uh, which sometimes you needed to do because uh, smart watches are connected via Bluetooth to the app and the app uses the phone GPS uh, to do its, 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 to provide its functionality. In this case, the S3 Classic provides the onboard radios that you need in terms of communication. It's got the GPS, it's got the Bluetooth, it's got the NFC. So the application didn't need a secondary application on the phone open in order to function. It provided all the functionality it, it needed itself, uh, which means again, I can keep the phone in the bag, I can keep the phone in the pocket, and I don't have to always go to the phone for help. So now what do I not like about Golf Navi? Counterintuitively to the last thing I said that I liked, the app is contained within the phone. So you do lose the certain statistical functionalities and more deep data sort of functionalities that you would get from an on-phone application that you see in Golf Pad and Game Golf and, and, and Hole 19, things like that. You do miss those, you can't see flyover views, you can't touch a point on the map to get a distance. You aren't getting distances to hazards with the Golf Navi. I thought I had seen a commercial where you could scroll through and get distances to hazards. I haven't been able to find it again, so maybe I was just making it up. I'm getting old, I'm getting crazy, uh, but it isn't something I could find, so I don't wanna ding it on something that I thought it had uh, when it didn't necessarily have that functionality in the first place. But it is contained within the watch, so you don't get the extra functionality. With that being said, I don't necessarily see a way for you to get that functionality. All of those rounds are contained within the watch. I took a look at the Navi Note application, which it says connects to the Golf Navi. Uh, that is supposed to provide further course management and statistical functionality, but it seemed limited to me. Uh, it wasn't something that I could see going to a website and getting that I wasn't necessarily already getting in greater detail and greater functionality with my game golf or mobile apps that I currently use like Swing by Swing. 
And that's all I don't like about the Golf Navi. In and of itself, it's an easy to use, intuitive application with a good interface. It provided me the functionality I needed on the course. If, if you want direct distances to the pin, I would still need to supplement it with my cool shot or with a mobile phone application to get distances to hazards like bunkers or, or, or water hazards. However, the trade-off may be that I don't have to supplement it with my phone for other functionalities outside of golf. And ultimately, that's my goal, is can I take four or five gadgets and maybe end up with only one or two that I need? I think that the Gear S3 accomplishes that for me. It provided me the functionality I needed. It provided me, it provides it in a really, really, really premium looking form factor that isn't just a golf gadget. I will be using it every day for its smartwatch functionality, but I can also use it as my golf gadget. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with what I got, the Gear S3. I'm excited about it, it looks good. I've customized it with some watch faces. I've got some, some further accessories coming. I'm gonna do further looks and views uh, of the Galaxy App Store. I know that Hole 19 is out there. I know that Golf Pad is out there. If those two applications are out there and they're, they're generally, I believe, uh, subscription services, they may provide the extra functionality that, that I would need from the phone app. However, I, looked, I took a look at both of their descriptions and the apps that were needed for the Gear S3 relied on the mobile phone applications to use. So all in all, if I could go through my round with the Golf Navi, which essentially is what I do with the Microsoft Band, if I can go through my round with the Golf Navi and then d upload it uh, into the cloud, onto uh, Golf Navi site or wherever it goes or even transcribe it, that may still be greater functionality for me if I can just leave the gadgets at home. So I would recommend the Gear S3 as both a functional smartwatch uh, and a potential golf gadget for those of us who aren't concerned about having something so high priced on our wrists. It is not going to take place of your $600 Bushnell, but I think it does give a run for the money to things like the Apple Watch and people using the Apple Watch for golf course management. So there you have it, the Samsung Gear S3. If you've got a Samsung Gear S3 that you're using for golf, comment down below and let me know how you're using it, whether you like it for golf or whether you just use it for day-to-day -day activity. So comment below and let us know what you think is the best setup for your kit with the Gear S3. Hey folks, once again, thank you for watching this video. If you like what you saw, do me a favor, subscribe down below, comment and like this video, let me know what you think. I'll be doing more course vlogs, product reviews, and potential giveaways coming up soon. So please subscribe and share with your friends.